This time on STV, I'm trading in one of my old sleds for another one. A decision I might regret, especially looking around here. STV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. 509, fueling your passion. And by Polaris, think outside. Well, it's time for me to make a change to my fleet of snowmobiles for the new season, so I've decided to send Goldmember down the road. That's right, I'm waving goodbye to the beautiful brown sled, but before I tell you what machine I'm making this sacrifice for, let's look back at my time with Goldmember. It all began in Peterborough, Ontario at Sledorama last year, where I was looking for a new-to-me old sled for the 2023 season of STV. Because one of the attractions at Sledorama is a pretty good swap meet, this makes it the place to go to look for old parts and machines. So after an exhaustive search, I stumbled into Ed Long and a gorgeous Yamaha Inviter for sale. And I fell hard for this sled. It wasn't long before the deal was made, the money was paid, and the inviter was loaded up, headed back to the shop. I was feeling pretty good about my purchase, even though I never thought in my wildest dreams I was going to own a brown snowmobile. When I bought the sled, Ed said that it was good to go, and he was right. It needed very little in the way of mechanics to be ready for the snow. Really, just a set of brake shoes to keep it from hitting the garage door again, and a battery was about all it took for repairs. But I was never able to find a new starter to take advantage of this bougie electric start option. But really, wheeling over a 28 horsepower single cylinder isn't that taxing, so a non-functional electric start wasn't an issue. With literally everything important working on the inviter, I wanted to have at least one on-trail adventure with the sled, so we took it on a round-trip ride to and from the Bonnechere Cup Ice Oval Races in Eganville, Ontario. In total, Goldmember covered right around 180 kilometers on the trails of the Ottawa Valley and it ran like a champ. The only trailside repair we had to do was to remove a seized idler wheel, which clearly wasn't needed anyways. It did sort of eat a spark plug, but with a spare in my pocket, it was good for the trip back home. And I must admit, the inviter performed flawlessly and I wasn't showing it any mercy on this point of the trip either. It was full send at just about 60 kilometers an hour the whole way home. The Finger Blaster 3000 was tapped. Now since that ride, there's been a number of trips around the trails close to home and I've really had no issues with the inviter other than a broken windshield. But really, that's not the fault of the machine now, is it? Brody. I've been super impressed by this little oddball brown sled and I'm sure I'll regret the decision to part ways with it one day, but it just doesn't live in my heart like my old 1990 Polaris Indy 650 does. And because of this, I've traveled here to JT Power Sports outside of Barrie, Ontario to make a straight up trade on this bad boy. Well, not the Harley Davidson. 
the Kawasaki. This sled is a 1980 Kawasaki Drifter 340 free air that sorta of, kinda of begun its transformation into an ice oval racer and even raced once last year in the OSOR races in Cochrane, Ontario. The current owner is Jeremy Gerard, who is also the owner here at JT's. And while chatting one day about vintage ice oval sleds, he said he had it, that it was for sale, and he wanted roughly what I wanted for the inviter, so we made a deal. I'm pretty excited about this because this means I get to go ice oval racing. This is gonna be crazy. And it's a free air. Oh, this thing's got, it's got lots of leaves though. Over the last couple seasons, I've had the opportunity to spectate at a few races like the Bonnechere Cup and also at the granddaddy of ice ovals, the Derby at Eagle River, Wisconsin. Seeing those sleds rail around the oval looked like a whole bunch of fun. Plus, I hate being a spectator at any racing event. I'd much rather be a participant, so I decided I needed a sled to race. I didn't want to start at the top though. The guys and girls in the fast classes are certifiably crazy and there was no way I wanted to start there. I would literally kill myself so I knew I wanted to start off with a vintage racer. Which is not to saying these vintage sleds are slow because they are definitely not slow except for maybe my new drifter and also because the competitors in these categories are every bit a racer and as passionate about ice oval racing as the folks in the big classes. But for me with STV, I don't have the time or the talent to run up front with any competitive ice oval racing series in the winter time. So it's gonna be about the fun and the experience of it all. And I think the Drifter is gonna be not just good, but good enough. This segment is brought to you by Ultimax Belts. Hey Jeff, look at that. He's already got it on the lift for us. I can't believe it's still here. He's like, like a fixture around here. He's been here forever, man. I just can't get rid of him, man. Eh? Can't get rid of him. Handy guy, handy guy. Very handy. Yeah, so anyways, I'm pretty happy with the trade so far. This is what I expected it to be. Um, I got a mountain of work to do, but, uh, but are you happy with the inviter? I think the inviter's gonna find a home here with the rest of the sleds and be a real happy camper. <laughs> All right, so I'm still pretty new with this sled, so Walk me through it. Um, how it came to be at the shop, uh, it was dropped off a few years back um, as a project. Um, I then sent it up to Cochrane uh, to my dad that was getting it ready for a friend uh, to oval race at the Cochrane Oval Races. Mm -hmm. um, they got it built. So what stage is it at right now for an oval race? Obviously, it's got the handlebars. It's got the handlebars. The track's been studded. Yeah, I saw that. The lube system's been built. Mm -hmm. tether switch up front um and you know a, a racing I, seat i'm assuming it's got carbides it's got carbides i i, I do like the removable fuel tank because that makes fueling it super easy so I, i'm taking you didn't run this we didn't we ran no. a few smaller tanks uh on it to uh you know to make it more racing racy yes so uh, when i look at this i think race right away now speaking of racing how was it in the race because did it Take the grid and did it drive by a checkered at some point during it the weekend? It did. It okay. started and finished a race. <laughs> That's um, really all you need. Sort of. Well, I mean. It kind of was slow. It was slow. It's not what you want to hear after you've made a purchase that it was slow. Well, there's ways to make it a little faster, but it's going to take some time and effort. All right. All right. So it's, it's on its way to becoming a successful racer, but you know, where would you say it's at in this transition at the moment? I would say you're about 60 to 75% there. You still got a little ways to go. I was hoping it was going to be a little closer to 100, not going to lie. But I, I think it's, it's good starting anyways. So what should I be doing next? Well, I think the next step is to start checking into the gearing, checking into the clutching, yeah. you know, kind of start getting the right go fast parts pulled together. Now for the, the engine, let's just open this up for a second. Yeah. So what's in here? So we've got a Kawasaki 340 free air uh, used in the Kawasaki drifters as well as the John Deere Spitfires. So the John Deere Spitfires, there should be 
plenty of parts available for those and for these. I'm hoping that stuff is out there. There is. The Drifter was a little more limited in production. Uh, they only built it for two years. Mm -hmm. I love the leaf litter. That's extra. Well, you know, we uh, we saved it out in the weather there for you, yeah, knowing you later. were coming. Yeah, I'm glad uh, you prepared it well for me. It's pretty simple though. I mean, they are just an old school snowmobile. I mean, essentially this thing was an upside down conveyor belt with an engine on it, right? Yeah, so. that's what you got. Now, can you do twin pipes? It brings you up a class, I believe. No, I don't want so to do that. So I think that. you're gonna have to stay with the single pipe. If you describe it as being slow, it doesn't have to be, you know, running at the pointy end, but it'd be nice to be able to keep up with the field. So I noticed this is like single carb. Was there the Spitfires, could you get like a twin carb option for these? I believe so, and I believe we're gonna have to go out for a walk in the field and okay, see if we so can find some parts. We'll look for one of those. Um, and you guys were running a, like a small fabricated fuel tank or Correct. one off of a snowblower or something like that? That's right. Because you're not going to use a lot of gas in this in a, in a race, so it doesn't have to be a big tank, I'm assuming. No. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about ice oval racing, so this is, this. I, I'm Although, new to it. I, I got no idea. Like, how close is this thing to make, even making tech? Like, I, I do see there's a tech sticker here. For, it did pass tech in 2022. Uh, so, you know, your brakes got to work. The brakes are working. The, Those brakes uh, the work. The tether's got to, the brakes do work. So you may need a little adjustment. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there's no tail light on it. Do you need a tail light? So you do need an LED tail light that runs on a, a battery. 12 volt battery. Yeah, it can't be connected uh, to the sled. Can't be connected because if the sled does shut down during the race, you want that light on so that people yeah. can see you in the snow dust. And I mean, I'm looking at it too. I noticed the track is sort of pitched up at the front. So yep. that's. For speed, obviously, everything about this is all for speed. I can tell. You know, you can, it, you know th this is like a 50 footer. From 50 feet away, it's like, if you squint, it's mint. That's right. Yeah. I do like the, uh, the lightning holes that are in the chassis here that look like they've been worn out before and then just re drilled a little farther forward. Well, you know, those are just yeah. key features to, uh, you, you gotta to do working that. on something that's 44 years old. That's how old it is. You know, there's gonna be play, there's gonna, you yeah. know, and. It truly is a different experience than a car. Yeah. Where a car, you're strapped in, you're here, yeah, it's you're so like. it's somewhat smooth. This is just raw and. Yeah. yeah. And it amazes me, like some of the, the racers that are super fast, like racing the F500s and stuff. Yeah. Like it's pretty physical and it's pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. It's, it's intense. They're like, basically thinking 100 mile an hour. Oh. Like, but I mean, this is fun because you're like, all right, this could, you know, it could I'm, still go bad, but. Yeah, I'm hoping that. You know, if you can crash this and then slide to a stop before you hit the hay bales. Yeah. That's yeah. sort of what I'm, I'm I jammed on my 250 enticer the first time. I had built, uh, so there's leaf spring stiffeners you can you build yeah. to stiffen up the leaf springs so that your skis don't kind of pop out when you're turning. I've seen those. They kind of have like yeah. it's a, a, a piece of like steel that runs down Basically the side. Basically, you weld yeah. them and you, you yeah. so I'll, my dad built mine for the 250 and he made them too tall. And so... I, came out of the first corner, jammed into the belly pan, I cut the aluminum oh. belly pan and kept the handlebars like this. <laughs> so I came out of the corner and straight <laughs> over the snowbank. <laughs> like, didn't even go straight. But it was like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> like, thanks dad. That's, that's good for today. That was, so back to the pits, hammered the things off and <laughs> tried again. I'm, I'm super happy. I think this thing is gonna be exactly what I'm looking for. And I'm looking for the experience. I'm hoping I can get to the grid and then maybe drive by a checkered flag at some point during the weekend. And if I do, I'm, I've won. But uh, I think in order to do that, we are gonna have to go look for some parts. So let's, uh, let's go for a wander and uh, we'll find some, find some go fast parts in, right the, on. in the pile. I'm sure there's some around to be had. All right, let's go take a look. Right on. We're going this way? Yeah. All right. So you got twin pipes for that? <laughs> This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. So Jeff, I think this is our gear department can find you something that's gonna make yeah, you can, that machine go fast. You can definitely give somebody the gears. Well, you know, we get several racers popping in here and I let them come in and kind of dig through the wall to try to find their yeah. perfect gear ratio. So what is the perfect gear and gear ratio for a uh, drifter? Cause I know I'm looking at gears, but I don't know which one would be which. Well, I think we're gonna have to do a little more homework, uh -huh. but uh, I'm quite sure that uh, maybe that one's gonna work for you. You are a professional. 
We can go with that. So drop so a couple teeth. This, this is the, the first key or first part of the puzzle. All right. All right. Let's so, keep digging for some more pieces. All right, I'll follow you. Right on. Because I don't know where I'm going. Let's go this way. Place is a maze. Oh, whoa. this is the carbon clutch department. Well, we might have a carburetor or two here. Or 17 million. Or 17 million. Yeah, so we're probably a set of dual 34s might uh, might liven it up. Here's like 34. I can tell it's 34 because you have 34 millimeter mick with choke. Makuni. I'm, I'm taking that uh, as a Makuni. There you go. All right, Jeff. So to sweeten the pot a little bit on the deal, I got this awesome Kawasaki helmet for you. I, is this Snell approved? You'll have to check with the race officials to see if they'll let you race with it. I like the uh, the, the curtain on the inside. Here, hold these. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I gotta try it. I, I think you do. This is, when was the last time a head has been in this thing? 1986. I can't believe my head fits. All right, there we go. Well, it stinks in here. Oh, I can imagine I'm, it I'm does. just, I'm gonna leave that for later. What the heck is that stuff? So maybe right. we should go check out the John Deere's out in the field and see what their setups look like. All right, let's go look at John Deere's. All right. If you're out here picking, um, that's typically where you get the best deal. Yeah. So I- You, you uh, find I, it, you take it off. And then you go through the effort of taking it off. I make you a smoking deal and you take it home with you. So we, we tend to, uh, you know, set baseline prices for certain things, but yeah. the majority of that stuff is out in our field. 2005 and older these days go straight to the field. Yeah. Do so. you replenish sleds in there often or is it all just? Quite regularly, actually yeah. you'd be amazed. Uh, we usually buy upwards to 10 sleds a week yeah. uh, through the season. And yeah, most of them get pulled in there and that sort of stuff. So there's a good portion that does, surprisingly. Yeah. This is the John Deere section. I can yeah, tell so, by the so green. So we've got John Deere's through. So uh, let's uh, have a look and see if there's uh, some potential here. That looks like a single. Single, but yeah. Um, I'm not sure if, well, you got a butterfly carb. That's an older model. So the John Deere's had Kohler's to begin with and then switched to Kawasaki's. Just no performance in this row at all with John Deere's. Well, I think, let's see what we got hidden under here. Oh, this motor's backwards in it. No performance there either. No. So I think we're out of luck out here. At SOL on the twin carbs. We're gonna have to maybe do a little more homework. But I got a 34. So that'll help a little bit. Yeah, give it a little more. All right, so what else should we look for? What else do you Maybe think that thing Maybe some clutch needs? stuff. Ooh, I like clutch stuff. I think we should look for some gears and some springs. Well, we got a gear. Got, we got a, gear. a gear. Got a helmet. Uh, I got a car. Maybe carb. some weights and some springs. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. My head's itchy from putting that helmet on. It's, it, uh, yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. So this is the clutching department. Yeah, we've got several clutches down here. Um, Any 1980-ish Kawasaki drifter clutch and clutch parts? Well, we might just have... Uh, I don't even what's in that for a clutch. It would be an old Comet, I believe, or, yeah. or Comet-style clutch. Um, but we can probably find a new Comet around here somewhere that uh, you could take home with you today. Well, we got some weights for you though. Okay, we'll take some weights. Cool, maybe some springs. You have product here. We've got lots of product. Lots of product. Do you know where everything is and do you know what you have? Organized chaos is best way to describe it. I get it. So, but we definitely have what you need if you're looking for something in a vintage parts. <laughs> well, we made it back to the shop, Jeff. Well, I definitely have a mountain of work and a scuzzy helmet filled with parts here, which will get me part of the way, but at least I know where to go if I need more, right? You're always welcome back to come and dig through for some more stuff. Excellent, so I will be back with more stuff, I think, because this is not going to bring this sled from the back of the field to the front of the field. Yeah. But we'll bring it back to the shop and start working on it, and uh, 
I think I am now officially an ice oval racer. A completely new rabbit hole to go down. You got it. This segment is brought to you by Polaris. I'm not gonna lie, I already miss Gold Member just a little bit, but I know it's gone to a good home. And despite having a bit of a mountain to climb with a drifter here to turn it back into a functioning ice oval race sled, I'm really excited about the opportunity to go ice oval racing for the very first time, which I'm hoping is gonna be at the Bonnachere Cup in Eganville, Ontario early in February. But until then, I got some work to do. But for me, just making it to the grid will be a win and picking up a checkered flag in any finishing position will be even better. I'm in this for the experience and to be a part of the snowmobile racing community, even if it's for just one weekend. I'm thinking this group of people will be as excellent to hang around with as every other group of sledders I've had the privilege to get to know, which is the great thing about snowmobiling, the sense of community we all feel for one another. You know, I think we can literally travel anywhere in the world and if we meet another snowmobiler, we've instantly met a new friend and can bond over snowmobiling, which I think is the great thing about sledding. But right now though, I'm out of words and time for this show. So until next time, keep the rubber side down. And I gotta get this thing running. I haven't heard it run yet. Hmm, I think it needs gas and maybe some rocks picked out of here. Come on. Closed captioning is brought to you by Scott Snowmobile Goggles. STV has been brought to you by Best Western Hotels and Resorts. Wherever life takes you, Best Western is there. Ultimax Belts, performance driven, performance proven. And by Ford F-Series, Canada's best selling line of pickup trucks for 58 years. Thunder.